John Muir Show, 1047 a.m. Your calls, your emails, your texts discussing episodes 9 and 10 of Making a Murderer Part 2. First to the phone lines and to Chad in Wausau. What's going on, Chad? Uh, Not much. Uh, I just have one question. I agree something definitely happened to her at the Avery's. I've never seen anything to support what Brendan Dassey says happened. I don't see... I've never seen anything in the original show or looked anything up online that shows any evidence that what happened in that trailer in the bedroom actually happened. There's no blood. There's no skin. There's no... That's my question. Does anybody know if they're withholding that information? Well, uh, again, what I can tell you to go along with the confession we have from Brendan Dassey, uh, it certainly seems that there was an effort to clean up uh, any of the blood that would have been in the bedroom and all that. And then, you know, you do find a lot of physical evidence outdoors that would support that. Like you said, yeah, she was killed at the salvage yard. You find, you know, her remains in uh, the burn pit outside of Stephen Avery's uh, residence. I mean, it seems they covered some of it up. The problem is you're not dealing with incredibly intelligent people here to the point where they knew that they had to cover up a lot more than just what might have been in the bedroom where some of this was taking place. That's what it seems to me. Yeah, I just feel like there'd be a lot of a lot of evidence. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that makes it compelling for me, is it? What really happened? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Chad, and I, I appreciate your call. Thank you very much. Like we said, there was a lot of evidence on the scene. There was obviously a lot of evidence from the salvage yard that was admissible in a court of law that was used to help to convict Avery and Dassey. We're not dealing with smart people. Again, we're dealing with legally competent people where they're allowed to go through the court system. Uh, this time we're going to go to John in Marshfield. What's going on, John? No, not much. Hey, I've been uh, following the making a murder thing uh well, actually, only through you guys. I uh, I canceled Netflix when they uh, decided to hire the Obama admit- administration. But following with you, <laughs> I have to admit, and it's hard for me to admit, when I did watch that first season, mm-hmm. I was absolutely more towards the fence, you know, leaning more towards they they did fool me. You know what I mean? I really mm-hmm. did. I, I did fall for the, you know, you know what I mean. The, yeah, they, they, you started. You started to buy the. You, know I mean? you started to buy what they were pitching on this uh, on this series. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, the first one. You know, I'm talking yes. to the guys that worked. Like, I don't know, I don't know. You know, and I was the one that actually watched the documentary, so I even knew more about it, and I ended up being more wrong about it. That's 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 how bad I. You know, you know, that's how one sided that actually was. Mm-hmm. And, then, and and they really did make a murderer by sending him to the prison. You know, to prison for the first time. That probably might have had something to do with it. You know, but. The uh, the Court of Appeals, I mean, they did a great job on that. So mm-hmm. Well, they, they absolutely did. And, John, thank you very much for your call. Um, we'll go back to the phone lines. Uh, I wonder if this guy agrees or disagrees with me on this issue or not. It's our friend Ron in Green Bay. What's going on, Ron? And good morning, Good John. morning. <laughs> the Manitowoc cops luminol the trailer, and they found no blood. They found no DNA from, from Halbach in the trailer. There's no collaborating evidence to go along with Daffy's confession. I Don't mean, you find that a bit troubling? Like I said, I, I was not there, Ron. So from what it seems to me that if there's one place where the people who are not very smart but responsible for a crime are going to clean clean up, it's going to be right where you know the gruesomeness with was Luminol, happening. With all, you cannot clean up good enough. If there's a trace of blood, the luminol shows up. And they luminol the whole whole bedroom, and there was no blood. Ron, it, it, it seems that they cleaned up the trailer incredibly well. They obviously neglected a lot of other things on the salvage yard grounds. They probably should have, if they really wanted to clean up everything, probably should have cleaned up some of the blood that was in the RAV4, probably should have cleaned up some of the bones that were outside the pit. I don't know why they did what they did. I'm not going to try and pretend that I know the the reason behind every move of people whose IQs are in the 70s or 80s, but nonetheless... There, there was no bone on the bullet that supposedly passed through her skull. But How it, can that be? Hold on, but her bones were found right outside Stephen Avery's residence. There was no bone matter on FL, the slug that supposedly passed through her skull twice. So, Ron, I'm just curious, since we disagree on this, what do you have any idea what you think actually happened? Nobody does, and that's the problem. 
But Manitowoc screwed up the investigation. What they should know is have a theory on what happened, and this is this is what happened, and have physical evidence to prove it. And they don't have that. Well, there was physical evidence that was obviously admissible at the trial. You had the confession from one of the two people who did it, giving a very detailed there was confession. No collaborating evidence to go along with Jackie's <laughs> confession. This is this, these are the problems. You had evidence that was allowed in a court of law that the jury was obviously impressed enough by that they were able to say yes, we are convinced that these individuals did this. And you had one of the two people who committed the murder saying in detail what they did without having those lines forced fed to them. It seems like it was a pretty strong case, Ron. I know you and I aren't going to agree on that, though, but thank you so much for calling in. I do greatly appreciate that. Uh, back to the phone lines again. Uh, not a whole ton of time, but we've got uh, Mike in Wausau, who uh, apparently lived in Michigan at the time of the murder. What do you have for us, Mike? Hey, John. Um, so at the time of the murder, um, right after the 31st, but before the news broke, um, my ex-wife and I were actually driving on uh, 47, heading back towards Michigan around 7.30 at night, and there was a fire so large that I actually stopped, turned around, and pulled down a road and saw that my, my thinking was that it was a barn that was on fire, and I pulled down the road and <clears throat> got a little bit further and closer down and realized it was not a barn on fire and someone was just having a bonfire, a large bonfire, not a burn barrel barn fire, mm-hmm. but something larger than that. Didn't think anything of it and moved on through our day and the rest of the week when the news broke on Teresa Halbach. Um, so I tend to think that there's some, some key points that the documentary makes that makes you question whether or not it's possible that due to the lawsuit in already one instance of him being wrongfully convicted, that there's a possibility that maybe something's going on here larger than what we believed at the time that we knew, which was Stephen and Brendan killed Teresa Halbach. I tend not to believe that they did it, and I have a history of law enforcement, have very, very many friends in law enforcement, have great respect for law enforcement, Mm -hmm. but I think that something happened here that is not, not accurate in that Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey should eventually get out of jail. I, I, I want to go back to your point about the coroner. Just real quick. If, yeah, absolutely. If the coroner was because she was from Manitowoc, Manitowoc County, was not allowed on the property for objectivity, why was Lank allowed on the property? Why was Weger allowed on the property? Okay, why Mike, and we're going gonna to have to get going, but thank you very much for that call. Uh, like I said, they should absolutely not have been on the property either. I, I have no idea why, and... As I've said, the example I've given, your football team's up by three touchdowns with less than two minutes to go, but then the ref makes a bad call and uh, the other team has something to complain about, even though it wouldn't have affected out the outcome of the game. You had enough evidence there. You had the confession of Brendan Dassey. It wasn't going to change the outcome, but nonetheless, for appearances purposes, you would not have wanted those individuals, those uh, Mantua County cops on scene. I don't think it was right for them to be there. I wish they weren't there. So I'm not going to say just because they they screwed up once, let's let another screw up happen and let more Mantua County officers there. No, you're not going to fix a wrong by adding another wrong to it. So um, regarding uh, the other uh, point that you made, you know, I don't even remember what the other point that he made was. I was paying more close attention to the corner part at the end of the episode or at the end of what he was saying there. Um, regardless, we, we don't all agree on this, but we've had some very good conversations about it and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. That is all the time that we have for today and for this week.